This video is going to be on the SQL pivot pattern. This is actually a fairly easy pattern that has some really powerful uh, results. And uh, we're going to take a few detours and side trips and talk about some other things as we uh, go through this, all in the same vein of making you a better SQL uh, writer. Um, and we're also going to use a before and after approach. So we're going to look at some SQL um, that creates a report and how we could rewrite that in a faster way using this pivot pattern. First off, we just want to kind of hit our tongue-in-cheek legal notice that there could be some syntactical errors in what you see. Our, our point here is not uh, to necessarily have the exact SQL for you to copy and paste, but rather just to show you the concepts. We do try to make it as accurate as possible, but sometimes in the copying and pasting and moving things around, and um, I find that I'm always improving um, the slides as I go, and sometimes uh, I might be making an adjustment right on the slide, and that can cause occasionally an, an error. First off, this is the mindset um, of how SQL should work. And I learned this actually later in my learning of SQL. And I wish I had learned it earlier because it, it has changed the way I approach SQL. And that is that SQL is a declarative language, not a procedural language. Most computer programs are actually procedural. You're telling the computer what to do. And that doesn't work super well with SQL. You can get the results, but they'll generally be slower. So another way of saying this is don't tell SQL what to do, describe what you want. When you tell SQL what to do, you kind of rob it from its magic. Um, behind the scenes, the, the writers of the SQL compilers, they, they're brilliant people. They have lots of, of tricks uh, that they can bring to bear. But if you tell it what to do, you, you kind of rob it of using some of those tricks. So uh, another way of thinking about this is always try to swim uh, downstream, not upstream. And when you, when you feel like you're fighting SQL, it's time to, to pause and kind of come at it from a different direction. OK, the first topic I want to discuss is subqueries. Now, this isn't directly related to the pivot pattern, but it, it helps knowing this as you enter into the pivot pattern. And talks, it also addresses some other things in the before and after approach that I want to show. Now, there's a couple ways you can do subqueries in SQL. One way is, uh, in this example, is to put a subquery into the select statement, this, this top part where you're selecting the data. So in this case, I'm just getting some information about a person, but I also want to get uh, the, format, the formatted phone number for the person. And so I can just put it as a column to bring back and provide an alias. Now, super important in this case, I, these subqueries, when used at, at, like this, they have to return one value. And one way that you could require that or to ensure that is to use top one. So this is one way you can use a, a subquery. Uh, fairly common. I'm sure many of you do this. And that will return these results. Another way you can do this, and I'm going to walk you through this in steps, this actually doesn't have the pattern that I want to show you. It does have a subquery, much like the previous example. But if we look at this statement here, it's just bringing back information for each person and just kind of totaling, summing up um, their uh, giving and then determining if they're in a small group. Okay. Now, what if I kind of wanted to roll this up and say get a total uh, for all the people who are in small groups and then a total for all the people who are not in small groups. A way we could do that using a subquery is to wrap the original query, which I kind of shaded out here so that you can kind of see the difference, uh, inside of another uh, select. So in this case, I'm basically saying, hey, I'm going to select from this other query, um, and in which case it, it allows me to kind of sum that up fairly quickly. Now, when you do this, it's, it's pretty much as simple as wrapping it inside a parenthesis and making that in the from. And then you do have to give it a, an alias here. If you don't do that, it'll be mad at you. Uh, even if you think that you're not going to use it, it really wants that. OK. So what does this second pattern kind of remind you of? Um, if you're familiar with common table expressions, it could remind you a little bit of that, right? It's the same concept. We basically define a query at the top, and then we kind of use it down below. So very much um, the same thing. You can use them interchangeably. Uh, 
you know, that kind of brings up the topic of what, when do you use a subquery versus a CTE? This is getting into somewhat a, opinion, but I would say it's the default for simple queries. It, I find it much easier to read for most, most people. Uh, most people can understand the subquery more than the CTE. Some people who are not familiar with CTEs, their eyes kind of go cross when they see that logic and it just doesn't feel quite as natural. When to use a CTE, however, I mean, there are good reasons to. One is recursion, which wasn't shown in that other CTE. Um, in fact, most people who write CTEs are not using recursion. They're just using it as like a subquery. Um, reuse is kind of nice because you can define the CTE, that top part once, and then use it multiple times. And occasionally, when it's very complex, they can get a little bit easier to read. Uh, my go-to, though, subquery. Um, I don't use CTEs unless it's for recursion or I have a super complex query. Um, you can choose to do it differently. If you really love CTEs, that's fine. Um, but uh, I much prefer doing the subqueries. So let's look at a CTE case study, and then I'm going to show you how to uh, perhaps not use the CTE and instead use the pivot pattern, and it's, it's going to be, um, uh, I think, better in this case. So let's start with our goal. Our goal is to create this dynamic data uh, view here. Okay, and so that's what we're trying to create. And so basically, if we look at it, what we're doing is we're showing the parent account um, for the uh, uh, transactions or, or for the parent accounts for the account. And then we're summing it by um, the type of, of uh, a financial transaction was did the payment come from the ACH credit card check cash so we're kind of grouping up these totals here okay now another sub goal of this is to actually put a total a grand total into the bottom line now we're gonna keep going on this and as a requirement but my first thing here would be to say hey don't do this don't don't actually put the total into the grid because if someone were to go to sort this grid, this total all of a sudden is going to flip all the way into the middle of the data, um, or it definitely won't be at the bottom anymore. There's no way to keep that total at the very bottom as people start to sort this thing. So um, I would not um, recommend doing this. In fact, I would uh, highly recommend you don't do this. Uh, if you need this, it's better to put this outside of the grid underneath here in, in like a, a little HTML block. Um, it does cause you to have to rerun the query for that, but I think you're going to see here in a second that, that this actually is a separate query in this use case anyways. Okay, so let's look at the CTE for this. Now it's kind of crazy, a little hard here. Um, your eyes are probably going crossed. I, I know mine were at first, but it's really not that bad if you look at it. So we're just making a CTE we're kind of getting the information, the, the financial transactions for all of this. Um, and we're putting it into a temp table, which anytime you're using a temp table, that should be like strike one that you probably need to rethink this. Um, temp tables are kind of like a, uh, I'm not saying they're never needed, but they're too often used. Um, and that means generally you're fighting SQL and you're going upstream instead of downstream. So we're gonna insert that into a temp table and then we're gonna use the SQL pivot operator um, to do the summing on the various different types of uh, payment types, okay? And then we're gonna order by, by parent account. So it's this top portion here that's doing a majority of the work. And then down below here, if we kind of scroll down here, we're doing the exact same thing again. And the only purpose of this second portion is to get that grand total, okay? And just notice that we have this, this column here, which is a sort column, and notice that we're hard coding a ZZZ. Now, we're gonna come back to that. I just want you to, I just wanna point that out because I'm gonna put a pin in that and come back to it. So we've taken these two um, temp tables, and then we're selecting from the temp tables and we're using a union, so a union basically takes this query and appends it uh, to this query. So it takes two queries and puts them together as one query. Um, the, the caveat there is that the return um, columns have to be exactly matching. And then we're going to sort by that 
And then of course we have to drop our temp tables. If you don't do that, you run into bugs and errors and, and, and bad things. So whenever you have a temp table, you have to remember to drop the temp table. Okay, so all of this takes about a second to do, 1.1 seconds. It's not terrible, you know, that's probably livable for like a financial report like this. But, you know, I think we could do better. And again, the data looks like this. The first CTE is going to return all the rows above this. And there's, I'm actually um, using the sample data here, so uh, it's a little bit smaller. And then that second CTE is just doing this bottom row down here. And you can see the ZZZ here again. This is just kind of helping us to fake sort. Um, if we could sort by this, it, uh, which is the default that we're going to put into our block, then this is going to be at the bottom. Okay. Now let's rewrite this using the pivot pattern. Now the first thing I want to throw out here, I know you're going to start looking at the, at the code. The pivot pattern does not use the pivot function. Okay, so we saw a hint of that over in that CTE. Ironically, the pivot pattern doesn't use the pivot function. Now, a little sidetrack on the pivot function. Pivot function is pretty cool. It's, it's a lot like a pivot table inside of Excel, but in SQL, it's kind of lame because it's very fixed. So you have to like hard code, uh, you know, your pivot columns. And a lot of times you don't want to do that you know, because you want it to be dynamic, but there's really no way around that other than to make dynamic SQL, which is the only way to make that work. And it's it's a little bit slower and, and a little janky. Um, this, however, has some of the same problems, though. It is very fixed, um, but um, it is probably a better approach uh, than, than the previous one with CTEs. So let's, let's take a look at this. So we're going to return the same data. We're going to get the parent account, the actual account. Now here's where it gets interesting. So note first that we have a group by at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to group by the account and then the parent account. Okay, so we're, that's, that gives us these two columns that we can return. And so you know with a group by, the rest have to either be in this group by or they have to be aggregates which is kind of exactly what we're doing. So we're going to sum, and inside of our sum, this is, this is the cool part, we're going to do a case statement. So case when the currency type value ID is 9, that's a check, then we're going to return the amount. But if the value that we're uh, going through here in aggregating is not 9, then we're going to put a 0. So we're basically summing, and we're saying, hey, if the currency type is a check, then consider it for the sum, otherwise just give it a zero. And then we're just doing some formatting to make it look like currency. And then we do the same thing. We're saying do the same thing, but this time if it's if the currency type value is six, consider it for the sum, otherwise it's zero, and that's to get our cash amount. And the exact same thing again for the credit card. So basically what this does is it kind of provides like a little bit of a dynamic sum we're only going to sum the values when the currency type is what we want. And then down here at the bottom, I'm just saying, okay, this is the traditional what you would do uh, without the pivot pattern, just sum everything. So we want the, the kind of like the grand account total. Okay, so that's that's the pivot pattern. Now, this only put, took 0.39 seconds um, to, to run. Now that's kind of half the solution, right? Uh, before I had two CTE. So if I wanted to get that grand total, I would have to do that. Okay, so again, the magic is right here um, inside of this summing and we're doing it kind of dynamically. We're only summing certain values when they match the criteria we provide inside the case statement. And the same thing, you can do, you can use other aggregates, like this one's using count. So I want to maybe just know how many transactions had uh, used a check. In this case, I'm using count. And what I do is I just say, uh, when it is a check, then the value is one. Otherwise, it's null. So a null does not get counted, which is kind of interesting. So before we're using sum, but just realize you can use almost any aggregate in here and use the same kind of logic. And that'll give you uh, kind of what you want. So min, max, average, all this works inside this pivot pattern. Now, 
the total if we want that again again i highly recommend you don't do it this way you just keep exactly what i had and then put this other query down here in like an html block below it uh, where it kind of belongs. Go look in some of the other core blocks inside of Rock in the financial areas. That's where we put them. Like for the, uh, I believe it's like the batch detail uh, has that same pattern down there. So in that case, we do have to union it. If, if I do want to provide that, you know, kind of the wrong way of doing it, I would have to union it with the exact same uh, thing. Um, this time, Though, instead of using ZZZ as a sort order, I'm just going to use the number one. Um, it's much more clean to not use ZZZ. It's kind of an abstract, odd thing to do. Instead, just use the, the number one. Okay, so let's review that. This solution, this uh, after solution, has no CTEs used. There's no temp tables. So you, you might say, well, CTE to CTE or not to CTE? Well, we didn't also have to use temp tables, which again, that's kind of a, a, a crutch and it's not a clean, elegant way of doing it. And it's also 50% faster. That's probably the biggest reason to do it this way. So that's uh, the pivot pattern within SQL. I would encourage you to kind of try it out, uh, go through that. Um, and use it, I think you'll find it's kind of uh, uh, eye-opening all the different ways you can use that when you realize that a sum, an aggregate, you can actually do almost like an if inside of it. That's what that case statement does and say, hey, I only want to sum some of these items, not all of those items. Uh, and I think you'll find a lot of different ways that you can use that.